Memorial Day reminds us that we live in the garden of change. When things change, when we lose someone, even if it's a new, um, maybe it's a loss, even if we choose it. Think about it, changing jobs, a town, locations, or a divorce, which is a death. There are things that we will miss and things that we won't miss. We don't take action until our mental list of possible gains are greater than what, we, what the pain of loss. It's a math of living. The vision pulls, the pain pushes, and then here we are again, on our knees in the garden of change. Or maybe it's not a list. Maybe it's a wise friend who encourages you in a better direction, helping us to notice um, we have been in the pain that we've been enduring and the resources beside us. This is holy ground of having a community of like-minded people, a community of light. Hafez said it well in this poem. How did the rose ever find the courage to offer all of its beauty to the world? It needed the encouragement of light against its being. Otherwise, we all remain too frightened. Wise friends walking with us are golden. It's why we form community. We need each other's encouragement. Change helps us to open to receivership. We can't do this alone. If we do, we tend to go dark. It is the very good lesson. It is the lesson of the rose. So is the lesson of the lotus and sacred soil amendments. That's right, sacred soil amendments. Both my landscape architectural brain and my hospice chaplain brain think of the unnoticed resources under our feet as holy ground sacred soil amendments. Imagine this, the exquisite lotus come, bud coming up from the pond and reaching for the light and opening. But it is rooted in the most awful, mucky, slimy stuff at the bottom of the pond than you could possibly imagine. The lotus is using it all rooting into the resources under its feet to bloom. All the lotus needs is right here. But when the losses are not of our own making, it's much worse. It's like the destruction of an ancient, magnificent oak. There's a hole in the sky where the oak used to be. The death of a loved one, whether it's the long decline of dementia, or an abrupt accident that leaves us on our knees in the muck, breathless from the hole in our hearts. It's a lot. Grief is a mud bath. <laughs> it's messy and chaotic and inconvenient. In terms of getting over grief and loss, the only way out is through. It seems to be designed for us to pause and listen more deeply. We can deny grief, claim a positive attitude to appear as if we're coping when we're not, say we're fine when we're not. But we, if we don't stay in the healing mud of loss long enough or listen deeply enough, we are likely to get stuck. The fastest way through is not to run from the pain, but to face it to walk toward it. AA folks know this. We are humb humbled in these tender valleys. I call them the front lines of love. The word humility comes from the word humus, which for you non-gardeners, is the sometimes stinky organic matter like compost and manure and well-rotted detritus that makes beautiful soil 
and fuels new growth. It's the lesson of the lotus, to use it all. All of our experiences as nutrients in the sacred mud of loss. Holy loam of change. Holy ground of our being. The road to reconciling our losses and finding the way back to joy is full of potholes and mud, but it's healing mud. Being on our knees in authentic grief is an inside-out perspective. Again, it seems designed for us to pause and listen. Listen to the whispers of what is true and unchanging. The new stories that match us who we are now. The dreams of our 16-year-old self are probably not going to be satisfying our sustaining ones at 60. But what uh, a poem snippet by Ted Loder called Wrestling with the Light, which we seem to need to do, trusting that whatever things it may be too late for, prayer is not one of them, nor a chance, nor change, nor passion, nor laughter, nor joy. From the loss-shaped hole within, we can plant seeds of a new life that fits us now. I lost my favorite aunt this month, Aunt Mary. Actually, we lost two aunts, Aunt Sue and Aunt Mary, this month. And I also lost my last kitty, a six-pound talking cat named Sister. They do get in your heart. It was time for her to walk with spirit. Today I am here with both an Aunt Mary-shaped hole and a sister-shaped hole in my heart. But I have a lot of personal practice with loss. Most of my family is gone. But as a hospice chaplain and a grief counselor, I know that in this space, sometimes we can, I can, glimpse those undigested stories in the hole of loss that their loved filled but did not quite heal. Not, not all the way. The opportunity in the muck of grief is that we can heal a little bit more. So we can re receive the mud-fueled new stories that are waiting to be planted in the bare patches. This is where we all become gardeners of our lives. Nothing is really broken. Now, there are no mistakes with God, as the song said. It's all part of the cycle in the garden of change. After we have tended ourselves and mourned enough, new things will start to grow on our naked earth. Do you weed them or do you feed them? Use your gifts, plant them, nurture them, tend that. Remember the lesson of the rose to receive the encouragement of light and remember the lessons in the mud from the lotus, to use it all, both the light and the shadow, to fuel our blooming. As you plant your Memorial Day bulb in the good earth today, be awake to the bulb. It has everything it needs to bloom into story. And so do we to the beauty that fits us now. It may be sprouting as we speak in the holy ground of loss. George Sand said this. She said this. It's never too late to be what you might have been. The good news is that we are not alone on this road. Everyone who is breathing is on this road. We have company in the changes. Be the gardener today, tend it all as love and with love. Thank you. <laughs>